Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure to talk today about future mobility and the urban forum. So I am an architect who fell in love with architecture through skateboarding 25 years ago, basically on the move through the city. Uh, obviously, I'm too old for that today, but that passion kind of still driving our work at the studio. Um, but also, there's a very objective reason why we should integrate urban mobility and urban planning uh, together and think of them integratively. If we account all the global CO2 emissions for constructing and running uh, on operating buildings, adding them up with uh, transportation, we account 60% of all, of all global CO2 emissions. So there's a lot of room for improvement here that we can, uh, if we think more integrative. So that's the basis for our uh, uh, work at the studio. We are based in Berlin since eight years now, and we are working more uh, conceptually with research collaborators from the mobile industry, like Schindler Elevators, uh, Audi, or e Ego Mobile, and other research institutions. And before we look now in the future, like a little kind of reminder why we are today, uh, because we believe that actually the two you know, mobility technologies that are the main drivers for urban shape today uh, the car hasn't changed dramatically, um, still four wheels and a steering wheel. And uh, um, the uh, elevator that was invented 150 years ago is still the same um, um, safety technology that was invented by Otis is still in, in shape. So um, what kind of urban spaces were evolving around those uh, mobility technologies? One, obviously, the car city characterized by low density, massive urban sprawl, high CO2 emissions, and it means connectivity for the car, but it really isolates people from each other quite extremely. The other extreme, the vertical city, based on the idea of the elevator, um, is, um, is kind of, you know, is the idea that stacking people and the space efficiency in a vertical way. In New York, we have 35 million passenger rides per day in elevators. So the elevator is truly part of an urban mobility system. Every ride ends or starts with an elevator almost. But as the elevator became a commodity, um, we can see that there's a certain copy-paste urbanism. You know, uh, um, and these spaces really you know, lack that, social, uh, that, that spatial quality for social interaction between uh, those buildings. And people find their homes. Uh, and identities in the Cartesian network, Street X, Street Y, and Floor Z, basically. So, um, but we could go even more extreme. We believe if you mix those two, the car city and the elevator city, we end up with cities that are actually people separation machines. We're doing really well, in, like keeping people apart from each other. And we believe urban mobility should be really focused on connecting people, not only places, but really connecting people with each other. So, you know, uh, especially, you know, you all know those numbers by 2050, 70% of the world population will live in cities. That means 3 billion more people. That equals to 800 times of Berlin that we will have to build in the next 30 years. And so the question is obviously, how do we do so? Um, and I mean, for me, obviously, fantastic. This is electric. This is at some point autonomous. Uh, it will be shared maybe uh, at some point uh, and connected. But you know, the real innovation, I think, you know, has to do with space as well. You know, what is the spatial sustainability behind it? Probably you have all seen that image. But if you look around today here, this is exactly what the gar car does to our cities. And you know, we can experience it now firsthand. Uh, basically, you could have all driven with a car in here, basically, with probably the same amount of people. So we believe really the revolution comes from below. Small scale, human scale, mobility devices, one wheeler robots, and the older they get, the more wheels you get. Um, and, you know, it's actually not only corona free, but it really is, you know, br you know makes people healthier and therefore also more happier. Um, this is a graph showing um, the, the, the frequency of active mobility, uh, which is really high in Switzerland, versus a really low level of obesity in a society. And you can see in the US, it's almost uh, the other way around, a really low level of active mobility and a high level of obesity. So we, we're actually promoting and we're like advocating the shift from a kind of linear urban development that's really car-based to a network of hyper-connected neighborhoods. Um, so the idea is really to have this transfer um, 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 between those neighborhoods and then have a local uh, mobility system within that neighborhood. And so this is our 
idea of visualizing how Berlin 2070 could look like, this organism of hyper-connected neighborhoods, uh, urban villages that are built in a walkable distance around existing but also new stations. Uh, so it's really this idea of a kind of station-based urban development. And that is actually then connected to those hubs uh, through public transportation, obviously subway, BRT, cable cars. Here you see the flywheel. It's an idea we developed together with Audi, where there's a one-seater that actually can couple together and for space and, and, and um, energy efficient travel uh, for on the transfer routes. Or maybe one day with a drone bus, you never know. But the idea is then really to you know, land in that mobility hub. And I think we heard about before, this hub is, I think, a really interesting new kind of urban typology. Uh, you could almost argue it will become the 21st century cathedrals, maybe. And this is where you change from your uh, public modes to a micromobility, which is you know, serving into the, uh, to the uh, neighborhood. But then also other services are here available, logistics, uh, and so on. So, so basically, yeah, this is a big, bigger, uh, bigger hub idea, which is maybe also connecting between cities. In this moment, um, we have, but it really, really should become places that are not just you know efficient, connecting different mobility networks, but it really also have a spatial quality to it and a, uh, a you know an architectural kind of uh, quality, basically. We are working now on a big uh, federal-funded research project in Hamburg, where there's a new urban development of 20,000 people uh, um, um, will live there. And in red, you see 11 mobility hubs that we are now researching and how they can be uh, rolled out and how they can be operated as well. So, but now, beyond the mobility hub, we have to imagine that a whole new world of possibilities is actually possible now since we left the car there and uh, the idea is like what how do we design these neighborhoods then and we would argue of course in a very human scale uh, mixed use um, and uh, in a very healthy way uh, as a healthy environment so we can have that shift from this is a car centric urban development with street grids uh, big blocks and um, uh, courtyards that are you know um, um, Save us from the, the, the noise of the street, so we can have that sleeping uh, uh, rooms basically um, towards their backyard. But now, if we leave the cars out, we can imagine totally new design possibilities for that neighborhood. It could be much smaller scale, diverse spaces um, that are more interesting and more enjoyable uh, to experience through. The streets could become a multi purpose kind of uh, surface that can be temporarily occupied and like also. Uh, differently in different ways, um, you know, as long as you walk around the corner, it's easy to reroute through uh, uh, um, those uh, uh, environments. And we can also think in different materials. Why always using asphalt? You know, why don't we use materials that are more enjoyable to walk on? Or my, why not even swimming to work one day? And um, you might laugh now, but I mean, this is actually exactly what uh, Benjamin David is doing in Munich. And uh, I mean, look at that happy face. I mean, this is what we should try to achieve. I mean, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Happy and healthy citizens. You might remember Michael Douglas and falling down. Well, it doesn't look too good next to it. So, um, but there's other you know, ideas as well uh, beyond uh, walking, of course. You know, electrification of micromobility uh, opens up a new world. I heard, uh, I just learned that uh, downhill racing is something from last season. Now it's about uphill racing. So we thought, like, why can't we think of streets as well more like three dimensional landscapes as a kind of, you know, more diverse. You know, if we want to stack and you know densify our cities, why can't we think of streets as a more three-dimensional network and uh, design neighborhoods that look like inhabited um, um, uh, mountainscapes or uh, landscapes, basically, uh, where you can take your e-bike up even if you get old. Like it's really easy to travel through those environments, and it's not because we like you know these shapes or these rounded forms. It's really a geometry that's driven by the motion of this uh, uh, micromobility. So either, even every curvature is really, you know, let's say, scientifically uh, uh, proved, so to speak. And it's actually, obviously, a much uh, safer environment. So vertical connections could be solved through spiraling ramps, connecting the different, uh, uh, the different floors. 
um, we end up with a much diverse landscape, courtyards, and it's still a very di dense uh, urban environment, but it's a much more human scale uh, urban environment. And it really comes down also to the point that we had to rethink how a, a residential unit could be organized. And here, since we, you know, multiplying public space as well, we're working here with double height platforms. And in between, you have those uh, living units where it's always uh, composed out of a um, um, uh, double duplex situation, uh, with a, which gives you privacy. You have a first floor, and you might have a porch in front of your unit where you can park your e-bike uh, to order to, to mediate between the public and the private spaces here. And um, since uh, mobility is really about moving as well, like this is what we're doing in the, in the studio as well, we're not only working with still images, but we're using really film and animations to also design and test those environments. And just wanted to show you a quick movie. Let's see if it works. So with that, uh, um, please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, and with that, thank you very much. <laughs>